Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. Anyway, so large cap trading, we want, I'm a, we're gonna be going over like differences between large caps and small caps, large cap setups, kind of intro, like large cap trading one-on-one. Like we could have another one in the future, but this is gonna be the, the kind of intro one. So today, gonna be going over the key traders over the last week. I, I'll probably get on a couple from the week before just because I we didn't have a webinar last week because of Halloween. I'm going to go over the weekly market sentiment, where I think we're headed, where I think we're at, where I tend to lean more on my, my biases. Um, I, I got a couple of trader topics and or fallacies I want to talk about, and then we're going to get into the, the, the large cap strats. And um, to help me with that, uh, Brian, Trader Tax CPA, is going to come on, and, and we can all let's we can all just shut up and listen. So uh, that's that's what's planned for today. All right, so uh, some of the traders uh, that, that happened this week and last, um, IC was a big mover. Now, IC was a funny stock. Like, it was, it was one that, that, that did take me off guard because when I initially shorted this one, part of my thesis was that this had a, a kind of a larger float, right? This wasn't like the, the, the sub-5 million cap play that we normally get. This was a... Excuse me. This was a play that had a larger flow, and typically those can't sustain the gaps. Um, and I don't think that's spoiling anything. That's kind of you know common sense, right? That like larger floats typically need a larger floats typically require a lot more demand to hold up. So uh, I actually I, that's why I was short biased on the stock, and like we had like decent pre market. You know, I think this was day one or day two. Um, we had decent. Um, pre-market resistance put in here at $2 and we spiked out of the open on there. And I'm like, well, that's a decent place for, for a shot. Uh, Xnet's a little bit more fun. Xnet is a trade I took and I made a live trade on this, but I'm for the annual and lifetime members that can see this, um, you know, they can see the live trade, but for anybody else who's not, and remember, I'll just quickly go over it. Uh, this is a reclaim setup and uh, norm, this is a stock that um, I think this was like, yeah, this was like day two or day two or three or something like that of this. And what, oh, thanks, Mike. And this is, um, and this is one where I originally thought in the morning that we might creep back up, like after this tank and like, this was a strong bounce, right? So this was the first indication that I thought uh, a reclaim could be possible because this was a harsh tank, but instead of staying weak down here, we had a strong bounce up all the way up to VWAP. And VWAP bounces are kind of typical, but maybe not so typical when it falls this harshly, right? This was a very, oh, B Wells, did I, um, is it not posted? It should be posted right here. I'm going to post it again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a, uh, Oh, I can't, I can't post anything. You got to scroll up. All right, so this strong bounce is what initially gets me in the mood for a reclaim trade because stocks, in, you know, the, the kind of philosophy I've had um, lately in trading is strong stocks should stay strong and weak stocks should stay weak. When we get a, you know, when we get a strong bounce like this, I immediately think a reclaim is possible. CRC, now this is the trade uh, where, um, I, I lost first, right? So I, 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 these were lower high shorts that I was going for. My first one failed, right? Again, I let the stock push up and, and pick a high a day. I didn't try to guess the high a day on the opening push, unless there was a good level pre-market, which I didn't see, right? Sometimes I'll do that if there's a good pre-market level or a good daily level, but I didn't find one that I liked here. So I waited for high, for 
for higher day to happen. And I got in on the pop, right? Notice good risk reward. I'm not chasing down here. So the first one failed and I instantly took it off. And that's really, I care more about this trade than showing this one. This one's just kind of meh. It's just kind of like a little recovery trade. Um, it's just the same idea, but later. The, the most important thing to take off is that, or the most important thing to take away from this trade is the instantly getting out when you're proven wrong, right? Like, you know, I did put a little ad on here, but that's because we're still under the high of day. And the second we get over the high of day, like, I'm done. Like, you don't play the guessing game, right? You don't play that guessing game, oh, is it going to, right? But well, maybe it's going to stop, right? Like, you don't play that game. Um, or I don't. And, and I recommend that people don't because it's just a dangerous game to play. And it's dangerous, especially for a new trader, because you don't have, like, the, the discipline instilled in you to know why you have to cut it like the because like eventually you're going to take a loss where you just take this big loss because you got stubborn and you're going to realize why you just cut it and so we had a busy market again and i'm really hoping that it continues and it should because november december january these are the fun these are the fun months to trade small cap plan oh that's a, that's a bad there typo right there um, but yeah, we had a lot of uh, small cap participants. It's been, it, we're still in earnings season, so large cap is still kind of going, and there's more large cap earnings than I can keep track of. I just wanted to pick the main ones, or I think the, the most exciting ones of the bunch. Um, the positives of this market, it's the SPY is really strong. Honestly, like a couple of weeks ago, I was wondering if we were going to be able to get over 300, and now we're like a 308. I think we're 308. Yeah, we're at 308. So we're in a really strong market and it's a busy market. So this is what I like to call an everybody's market. Everyone can make money. Shorts can make money. Longs can make money. Scalpers can make money. Faders can make money. You know, like, you know, news, news can make money. Momentum traders can make money. Like this is an everybody's market, right? One thing I'm really loving, and I'll talk to Brian about this too, um, or I'll ask Brian about this when he comes on, is that the market really seems to be shaking off the China delaying like the China meeting delay news and tariff news like which is really kind of I mean the market still like hiccups every time like the, the PRs come out but typically nothing like super um direction uh you know direction what's the word I'm looking for uh picking news comes out right it, the market just says oh hey look the news volume comes in it dies off and everyone goes back to where we were Right. Yeah. So it's, and that's kind of what I wanted to bring up. It seems to be like not every time, every time there is a, a China delay news because the market shaking it off if it dips, it seems to have been a good dip by the last like four times just because everyone's literally been, Oh, it's a dip. Oh yeah. That's it. Okay. Got it. You there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. What's up, buddy? Hey, what's up, dude? Dude, hey. what's going on? Nothing much, man. Good, good to talk to you again, man. It was good meeting you in Philly as well. Dude, I, I was, I was, I was stoked, man. Like I, there were more people that showed up than I thought. I was so stoked you were there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Thanks for having me on, too. Dude, thank, no, thank you for coming on, dude. You know, normally uh, whenever I do these webinars, I get to talk about taxes, and usually, uh, you know, I'll, I'll lose the audience within the first thirty minutes. So, so to get on and talk about trading, I'm kind of pumped. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, because like I mean, I'd probably turn you off too. No offense. Well, <laughs> like, oh, this dude's talking about taxes. All right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I gotta do that. I gotta do that. Like, I I regret doing that. I dread doing that once a year anyway. I don't need to listen to this. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm lucky though. I'm able to kind of you know work with traders, uh, you know, around tax related stuff, and then you know my schedule allows me to trade. So I basically, I mean, I trade every single day at a minimum, and then you know. Uh, I'll trade the open and sometimes I'll come back and check in. Yeah, man, uh, dude, like, I mean, you definitely helped me out figure, figure, figure my stuff out. So, I mean, I owe you that one. Man, I, I owe it to, to the king, Mr. Bow. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I tell him all the time, dude, if, if he took his scalping to large caps, dude, he'd be, well, he's, he'd be a monster in any market, so. Yeah, I mean, I, dude, because, dude, because, like, and what, like, to get into trading, I like, that's actually what I think that would be really good because, like, so tell me what you think about this. Like, so I have, I have this, like, what I've 
I've been slowly studying. Like it's hard because I get busy, like with trading, right? To even yeah. access that more. But um, when stocks do not have news, they're kind of in a in a sense. Now, Bao's specialty is low hanging fruit. That's kind of like the low hanging fruit of large cap land, right? A stock that doesn't have any news, and a stock, a large cap stock that doesn't have news normally just trades within the lines like because there's nothing to push it beyond lines and that's exactly what i do um you know outside of catalyst so you know a catalyst can be you know obviously a news driven event or earnings release or something like that but outside of that um if you understand the math behind like pivot points and things like that you'd be surprised at how close um a large cap mirrors them not so much on the small cap side, but for large caps, dude, they're on the money. Yeah. And, and that's why I think Bao would just beast it, but he, just, he doesn't. I think that's his next step for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Dude. Like, I mean, I, I can just imagine how, like, I mean, you know, like, I'm just picturing Bao doing the 600 trades in OTC land. I mean, the <laughs> large cap land, I mean, that would be small potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You would need like 20 screens. Okay, anyway, uh, so what I wanted to, what, one of the things I've been looking forward to asking you is what is like, so I showed, I, I just showed some of the only two or three setups that I even use in large cap trading. What is your favorite? Like, do you have a favorite large cap set, large cap? Um, um. At all? Like, you know, what's crazy is, you know, you, you, you um, essentially, you know, you kind of summarize it a little bit. Um, but when I was, you know, I used to be a strictly 99% uh, short biased uh, small cap trader. Probably I've been trading about four and a half, five years now. And, uh, you know, I, I would just, you know, I would just short, 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 had a couple droughts in, in the, in the small cap market. And so that's kind of how I started dabbling in large caps, but this was probably about two years ago, but when I started dabbling in it, as you know, dude, like I would buy it and then it would do the exact opposite. And so I was like, dude, this is rigged. Like this is, this is not as easy as, as, uh, as small cap trade. But as my trading, you know, improved on, on the small cap side, so did my cost. So, uh, you know, locate fees, things like that, you know, you have a good, you'll have a good trading year, but you know, when you look at your expenses, you're like, dude, it's like, 30, 40, 50% of my net profit. And so I was trying to figure out a way, uh, you know, to continue to make money without, um, you know, taking, taking as much hit on the, on the fee side. So giving, giving half of it back, right? Yeah. I mean, I think one year, dude, I was like 70, 80 grand in locate fees. Yeah. And yeah, like, and that's honestly like my locates have gone way down since I started long, right? Like I just like, I love that part of it. Right. Yeah, and then so longing, you know, I was longing, I, every now and then I'll long the small cap. I look for that trap move, but the thing about small caps is, um, you know, majority of the companies are, are, are trash or junk. And so, you know, when you long it, you're like, dude, yeah. don't do an offering, don't do this. Like, I don't want to be stuck holding the bag. Like, you're just scared to be a back holder. But on big cap stocks, though, like Tesla, dude, it's a billion dollar company. It's, it's you know, it's not going to zero. Um, it's just timing your entry. Right. And so that's kind of what I was getting into it. Like timing seems to matter a lot more in large caps, just like on longs and shorts. Yeah. Because there is none of that. There's, there's, you know, with small caps, you have that assumption. Well, like on the long side, it can only go to zero. Like I'm buying it at two. It can only go to zero, right? Like it can only lose two dollars. Yeah. And actually you got the Tesla chart up now. I traded that three times in the last two weeks. So if you look at that first day, that first gap up, so we gapped up 250 to, I don't know, what did we open, like 290 or something like that? Yeah. So if you're a small cap trader and you see that gap, your first mind, your first thought is, dude, I'm shorting that. Which, like, how much is the locate? Yeah. Yeah, how much is the locate? And, and, and I'm shorting that. But as a, in the large cap world, it's a different ball game. Like, right. you know, yeah. stocks that gap up, everybody wants them. You know, funds, um, you know, depending on the short interest, institutional institutional ownership, you know, they they want it, right? And so I think you touched on a little bit about going counter trend. So that first gap day. Here it is, right you know, here. Gap up and buy down here. That's it. Exactly. That's yeah. It. And so 
I think I literally bought that day, uh, maybe like, I'm trying to find my chart. Uh, let me see if I can find my, find my chart. But, but yeah, but Danny hit it on the head. Like stocks that gap up, typically gap up even more. So the first day wasn't actually the day that I made the, you know, the, the best trade. It was actually the second day. Um, so I call these like, you know, basically continuation plays, uh, day two, you know, day two runners, um, you know, however you want to classify it, the opposite of a low hanging fruit, right? Right. So actually on that day two, it actually opened red. Um, and that was my signal. I was like, okay, if we get a red degree move, this thing is going to absolutely rip. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.